Hello and welcome to another coding challenge. In this coding challenge, I am going to continue a series that I've been doing about algorithmic botany, one of my favorite topics. I'm here to tell you that if you like sunflowers, and I like sunflowers, then this is the video for you to watch. Because what I want to talk about is a topic called phylotaxis. And I want to examine what phylotaxis is. I want to look at the math behind phylotaxis. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. And I want to uh, create a nice shiny rainbow colored phylotaxis example. So uh, this is the Wikipedia page, phylotaxis. It comes from the ancient Greek. Uh, Phylon meaning leaf and taxis meaning arrangement. So it's a kind of spiral pattern that you see often in nature. It's connected to both the Fibonacci sequence Interesting thing to look up if you're not familiar with, and also the golden ratio. So um, the reference that I'm going to use is from this algorithmic botany, algorithmicbotany.org, from the University of Calgary website. Uh, there's a free uh, PDF book. The, uh, the, the math for everything I'm going to do is right here in this paper, ch in, in chapter four of this book. And you look at this and you think, ah, Greek letters and square roots and all that sort of stuff. But I'm here to tell you this is actually going to be something quite simple. So what I want to do is I want to uh, rewrite those formulas. Uh, oh. <laughs> my soundboard went off by accident. Uh, I want to rewrite those formulas over here. I'm going to say uh, uh, phi, or phi, I can never remember, equals n times 137.5 degrees. This is a very, very special <laughs> angle. <laughs> Hearts and stars for this angle, 137.5 degrees. One of my favorite angles. Everybody should have a favorite angle in their life, I think. And then also I want to say R equals C times the square root of N. So you can see, this is all we need. So why, in the first place, do we need an R and an angle? Well, this is why. This is a coordinate space, a Cartesian coordinate space, with an x-axis and a y-axis. And we're going to plot every point in this spiral pattern based on an x value and a y value. So this is a point. It's some x and y point. However, what the phylotaxis math is going to give us is not an x and a y, but a radius and an angle, the radius being the distance from 0, 0, that's r, and the angle being the direction. So you're going to see like this spiral pattern come out. We're going to draw all these circles, each with a different radius that's either growing, that's growing, and an angle that's incrementing. So we need to, but, but, but in, in P5 or processing or whatever programming environment you might use, I'm going to say like ellipse. I want to draw a circle at a given x and y. So what I need to be able to do is convert the radius and the angle to an x and a y. And how do I do that? I use something called polar to Cartesian coordinate transformation. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of fancy, but basically I need a formula to go from my r and theta r and phi or theta or phi or whatever angle, r and angle, <laughs> to x and y. And the formula for that actually just uses uh, cosine. By the way, if you say cosine of this angle, it equals uh, uh, cosine of this angle equals uh, uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, x divided by r, rx equals r times cosine of that angle, and y equals r times sine of that angle. We do the same thing with sine. So these, are the, these formulas you're going to see in our code, and these formulas you're going to see in the code. Now this looks a little weird. The only thing here is, is really, or the only thing was we're calculating r and, and the angle in order to get the x and the y, and in order to do that, we need to have an n and a c. What is n? N is, we're going to make a whole lot of dots for this phylotaxis pattern. And N is the number of the dot. Is it dot number 0, dot number 1, dot number 2, dot number 3, dot number 4? And C is a number for our scaling pattern. So you'll see that in a bit. Let's start to write some actual code. So I'm going to come back over here. And uh, here we go. Uh, I'm going to come back to the code. <laughs> I haven't actually to come to the code yet. So let's just look. This is some uh, P5JS code. I'm gonna, it's running here in the browser. It does nothing but draw a blank canvas. But I'm going to create a variable, n, which equals 0. And I'm going to say n++, right? This is the first thing that I'm doing. Because each frame, and actually I want to draw my background in setup. Each frame I'm going to draw a new dot. And I'm going to, how am I going to draw that dot? I'm going to say angle equals, what was the formula again? Uh, n times 137.5. So n times 137.5. And the radius equals what? c times the square root of n. 
So we need to come up with what C is. Let's make up a number for right now. Let's make up a number uh, what, two. I know, so you're, we're going to play with that number and we're going to see a bunch of different variety of results. OK, so now that we have A and R being calculated, we can also remember now all we need are these two formulas to calculate x and y. So now I'm going to say var x equals uh, r times cosine of that angle, var y equals r times sine of that angle. And then also, the thing is, I want everything to be drawn relative to the center of the window. So I'm also going to add uh, width divided by 2 and add height divided by 2. That's just to take, because if, if, if you look at my diagram over here, I'm thinking about everything as calculated relative to an origin point. But in a computer graphics window, the origin point is the top left. And so I want to shift everything over. OK, so now I'm just going to say ellipse x, comma y. And I don't know, I'll make the ellipse you know, 8 pixels or whatever. And I'm going to just say fill 255. And then uh, we're going to run this program. I'm, I don't know why I'm condensing all the code, so no white space. Here we go. Let's run it, see what happens. Hey, look, that looks pretty good. Something's happening here. Oh, wait, I think we finished. I think we did this already. Look, that kind of looks like a cool little spiral pattern. Well, let's, um, let, me, uh, let me show you something. First of all, I'm going to just expand C for a second. Uh, whoa, that's way too much. Uh, there we go. So, well, okay, no, this is not, oh, I, 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 <laughs> never mind. It's, trying to live code, that's not going to work. Um, let's make C a little bit bigger. Uh, actually, I'm going to make it a lot bigger just for a second. Sorry, I'm going to make it 20. You can see what C is doing is it's actually sort of a scaling factor. So how much is that radius changing, right? You can see here the radius is equal to the square root of the number times C. So if I'm drawing my circles at 8 pixel uh, with a diameter of 8 pixels, let's try making that C actually just something like 4. And you can see we can start to sort of see that pattern. Uh, let me make the circles a little bit smaller. Uh, let me just say no stroke. Also, maybe, maybe I'll, uh, and then we can run this again, and we can start to see there's that phylotaxis spiral pattern. There it is. Beautiful. Uh, um, there we go. In a way, I'm kind of done right now. I could sort of play with, um, I could play with the scaling factor. I could sort of actually play with the angle as well. And if you go, if we go back and looked at this paper, you'll see down here, like, oh, look at this. Here are some different kinds of patterns we could get if we kind of futz with the angle. This one here has an angle of 137.3. Not my favorite angle, but a perfectly reasonable angle. Uh, so let's run this and see what we get. And you can see how this spiral, what kind of spiral pattern we get now, which is kind of interesting in and of itself. The other thing we could start to think about what we might do is how we might color uh, the dots in a more interesting way. So one thing that I could do here is just use uh, HSB color. So I'm going to change. Oh, you know what? I don't think this is right. I think this whole time I'm getting something sort of vaguely interesting, and cor but I think that my angle mode, I don't think this is the exact phylotaxis spiral pattern because I believe the default angle mode of uh, P5 is radians. And um, really what this number is is in degrees. So I need to change the angle mode to degrees. I don't know, can you tell? Yeah, yeah, this is a little bit different and, and actually more correct. So I think earlier in this video, my phylotaxis pattern was a little bit off. But now you can see I'm kind of getting that beautiful, more uh, perfect pattern. And the reason why I noticed it is because I think when I went to 137.3, it didn't match up exactly with what was in that paper. But now this is match. I can see that this pattern is exactly what's there. So let me go back to now what I was thinking. The reason why I thought of this is because I want to change the color mode to HSB, meaning uh, when I create a color, I want to make it by its hue, its saturation, and its brightness. So if I were to say something like fill 100, 255, 255, then I'm getting a sort of green color for all of my dots in the pattern. And if I were to say 200, I'm getting a nice blue, because that number is a hue between 0 and 255. So I could say something like, I don't know, just make it the angle modulus 255. And actually, that should be modulus 256. Modulus being a way to, to cycle back to 0. So 256 modulus 256 is 0, and 257 modulus 256 is 1. So if I do this, you can see like, ah, oh, look at that. I get kind of a different sort of spirally hue for every single based on what the angle is. Um, I could actually use uh, n might also make sense just to do the, the actual number. So you can see now the number on the dot is controlling the color. Uh, I could actually do something kind of interesting, which I think is uh, angle minus radius we might try. 
I think would be kind of interesting. The difference between the angle and the radius, I don't know if this is gonna, uh, whoops, oh, it's just called A. Uh, and I guess I'll say modulus 255 there as well. Uh, whoops, A, my, oops, and I'm missing a parentheses. Uh, here we go. Uh, this is kind of, you can see how the, um, you can see kind of wet, where the hue is kind of traveling around in this spiral pattern. So there's all sorts of possible ways you can think about how you might create the color. Another thing you could do is I could change the size of these circles based on where they are in the pattern. They could be smaller in the middle, larger to the outside, um, all sorts of things. So here we are. I've got a nice thumbnail here for this video. I've made a phylotaxis pattern. I would love for you guys to go uh, take this code that I'll release with this video, scroll down, read more of this paper. Can you make a nice sunflower pattern? Can you expand on this? What types of things might you do? Uh, make some experiments, make some beautiful phylotaxis, and I will see you in another coding challenge in the future. Thanks very much for watching.